Hi everybody and uh, welcome back to statistics. We're going to try and do some uh, videos online to try and help you with your hypothesis testing topic. So I'm going to jump out to the PowerPoints right now. So I'm just sharing my uh, PowerPoint notes that are posted on eLearn for you. Our topic for hypothesis testing is from chapter 9 and chapter 12 and you can see we're pretty much covering everything but um, don't be too intimidated by this because it's basically one main mechanical process so once you get one down you're pretty fine for all the others. We will be looking at two different types of approaches, a critical value approach which is more your um, classical approach to it and then your p-value approach and p-value stands for probability value and that's more modern approach. So we'll be doing both of those. All right, so with hypothesis testing, we have some terminology. The first thing we have to sort out is that we're gonna have something called a null and something called an alternative hypothesis. So the null is the hypothesis that we're testing. So for example, if we wanna to use today's uh, exam, um, situation, um, the hypothesis that I'm testing is that I'm actually still healthy. And we have a symbol for this that we have H sub not, sub, uh, subscript zero or H not to represent that null or hypothesis. And this is really what's currently going on right now, what is generally accepted to be true. We then have what we call an alternative hypothesis using the subscript HA, and that's what we think might be happening. So again, maybe using our situation right now, I think I might be sick, what test am I gonna have to do? And the test that we're gonna do is to decide whether or not we're going to reject this null hypothesis in favor of the alternative. The different types of conclusions we can make is that if the null hypothesis is rejected, we conclude the data provide enough evidence or sufficient evidence to support the alternative. So in other words, something's happening that looks like the null is no longer true. If the null hypothesis is not rejected, we conclude that the data don't provide enough evidence to support the alternative. We actually run our tests at something called a significance level, and we'll get into that in more detail in a little bit. A little bit more terminology. We're going to have something called type 1 and type 2 errors. A type 1 error is if we reject a null hypothesis when it's really true. A type 2 error is that we don't reject the null hypothesis when it's actually false. And we're going to have a type 2 1 error example here we have a probability of making that type 1 error that's what we call our significance level or alpha and we saw alpha when we were doing the, um, the confidence intervals remember alpha was what was left over from our confidence level and we divided it in two because we had two tails in hypothesis testing we may or may not divide it in two but we do have that new name now for alpha our significance level we have a relationship between type 1 and type 2 errors and here we have that for a fixed size the smaller we specify the significance level alpha the larger the probability beta of not rejecting a false null hypothesis. Now we're not going to be involved too too much in these types of errors it's just really a conceptual understanding that we're going for. Here's the overall process summarized for a testing one population mean when we know our sigma. So we know our population standard deviation. So notice how we have a Z test again. Our purpose is we're going to perform a hypothesis test for a single mean and it's a population mean so we're testing something about mu. We have the basic assumptions we've had before. Simple random sample, a normal population, or our sample size is large enough, remember n greater than or equal to 30, but not greater than 10% of the population, and again the sigma is known. Our null hypothesis, the format will be H dot is going to be our mean, population mean, is equal to the current, or mu naught, the current mean that's accepted. And our alternative will be one of these three tests. Either the mean is not equal to what is currently accepted, the mean is less than what is currently accepted, or the mean is greater than what is currently accepted. And these are two-tailed, left-tailed, and right-tailed tests specifically. We're going to decide upon a particular significance level, and we'll compute the value of what we call our test statistic, 
And remember, we saw this when we were doing sampling distribution of means. Our Z score was equal to the point of interest, X bar. Remember, we're plotting means right now, or averages, minus the population mean, so point of interest minus center, divided by our spread, sigma over root n. And sometimes we call that Z naught. As I mentioned, we're going to have two approaches we'll look at. One is the critical value approach and the critical value approach. And it's going to look very similar to what we did before with our basic normal model and a little bit with our confidence intervals. Here we have in the two-tailed test, we have a region where we're not going to reject our null hypothesis. And we have the two little tails where we will reject the null hypothesis. So if our test statistic is in here somewhere, we don't reject. If it's in this area, or in this bottom area, then we will reject. For a left tail or less than test, notice how our do reject null hypothesis area is quite large. And we have a single alpha on the lower end. And this, if again, if our test statistic Z is in this area, we don't reject the null hypothesis. If it is over here, then we do reject the null hypothesis. And then for our greater than test or our right tail test, we have our area here where if our test statistic is somewhere in this region, we don't reject the null. If it's down here, we do reject the null hypothesis. And then finally, step five, we have to make a decision and then interpret our results. And as, as we start this, it's going to be a little confusing, okay? But it's going to take a little bit of time. But as we work through some examples, I think you'll find it getting easier. P-value approach, very similar to the critical value approach, but instead of looking at the Z statistic, what we're looking at is the area under the curve in the tails. And what we're going to do is compare that area, that p-value, to our chosen significance level alpha. And this is a formal rule. If that p-value area is less than or equal to alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we're not going to reject it. What that means is that, say I'm down here and my z-statistic is here, so I know I'm in the reject region. My p-value is going to be very, very small. And what that's saying is, is that my, the probability of my sample, my test statistic occurring is very, very tiny, but it actually did happen. So if it did happen, then something's going on to indicate that my null hypothesis might no longer be holding true. Here again is a different summary of the types of the tests, two tail, left tail, right tail. We have some different names for it. So a two-tail test can be called a difference test, a not equal to test, or maybe even a change test. Our left tail test is typically either left tailed or typically less than test. And then the right tail test is our greater than test. And as we go through examples, these will make a little bit more sense. We also have the re don't reject H naught regions identified now. So for the two-tailed test, we have the central area, that's don't reject H0, and we have the two tails where we do reject H0. And then conversely, for our less than tails, we have our do not reject region here, and for our reject region, it's at the single little tail. And please notice, this is alpha here, but the, in the two-tailed test, we have that same alpha, but it's split into the one, two pieces. And on the greater than test, again, the reject region is just the little tail on the far right. Now the tails in the distribution, they represent the extreme regions that are bounded by critical values. And here we have Z alpha, that's a representation of the critical Z. If our test statistic Z is over here, we don't reject H0. If it's over here, we do reject H0. So we're going to be comparing two things, our p-value to alpha and our z test statistic to our z critical. Now in our two-tailed test, we have a rule that we can use again with that p-alpha. So remember the critical region is in these two tails. So our p-value for our test statistic is going to be twice the area in the tail beyond the test statistic z calculated. And we'll see that in more detail in further examples. In the less than test or left tail test, the critical region is just in this tiny tail. 
So the p-value for our test statistic will be the area to the left of our calculated z. So remember, left tail test, p-value is the area in the left. And then for our right tail test, just like the mirror image basically of the less than test, the p-value is the area to the right of the z calculated. And again, this will make a lot more sense when we do some examples. So here's a definition of our p-value. We can call it a probability value. You'll notice here that I have a lowercase p. Sometimes in different texts and different screenshots I have, it's an uppercase p. Remember we had this issue before with the p symbol. It means many different things. So the p-value in hypothesis testing is the probability of getting a value of our test statistic that is at least as extreme as the one representing the sample data. And the rule is, if your p-value is less than alpha value, you reject H0. Now please, this is not a subtraction symbol. This is just the p-value, and this is the alpha value. All right, four basic parts to a hypothesis test. We state our hypotheses, what is currently accepted or believed, our null hypothesis H0, what we think is new or different, our HJ. H alternative. We select the model and remember we're going to be doing means where we know sigma and don't know sigma and then we're going to do proportions also. So we either use our means when we know sigma for this sampling distribution of means where we have the point of interest minus center divided by spread or for proportions point of interest minus center divided by spread. And notice we have the Z statistic here and the Z statistic here. We know sigma in this case, that's why we're using Z. We identify our critical values that are associated with our alpha values. Remember, and that's our chosen level of significance or confidence level. We perform the mechanics or the basic calculations. So the basic calculations are calculating these Z values here. And then we make some decisions and conclusions. And when we make a conclusion, we always have to remember our conclusion in the hypothesis test is only ever a statement about the null hypothesis. We never turn around and say, well, the alternative is true. We just say that we have enough evidence to reject H0 or not enough evidence to reject H0. So be careful with that. So, and again, you know, we're doing this in an academic setting, so we have to remember to uh, rec recognize the context in business decisions. So here's an example <clears throat> where we have traffic studies during the period of photo radar have shown that the average free-flowing traffic of speed along the QEW is 106.4 kilometers per hour, and our sigma is known 4.8 kilometers per hour. Since photo radar was removed, it's suspected that the average speed has increased. So the average speed of 85 cards during a, a non-rush hour period was recorded and found to be 108.2 kilometers per hour. With 95% confidence, what can we say? Well, the first thing we have to recognize is that we have a given situation. Now, in a test question, I'd most likely be saying, run a full hypothesis test. So you'd be very clear as to being able to identify the question. Here, for sake of space on the overhead, I haven't included that. So the hypotheses are for this situation, the null hypothesis. The mean, the mean speed on the QAW is 106.4 kilometers. So lack of photo radar has no effect. So, you know, we have this sort of big brother situation. That's what was known before. The alternative is that since the radar has been removed, it's suspected that the speed increased. So we suspect that that speed has increased, it's gotten bigger, greater than its original value. So lack of photo radar, in words this is, has increased the average speed. So here we have a situation we have to notice. The mu, the population parameter, is the same in both the null and, alter and alternative hypotheses. The population value is also the same in the null and the alternative hypotheses. It's the symbols that change. Null typically always has just equal. Alternative has one of the three, not equal, greater than, or less than. And we have greater than in this case. So we have a directional or right tail 
or greater than test. Now our decision rule, that's not going to change. We have 95% confidence, we were told. We know that that means alpha is 05, so 100% minus 5, 95% is 5%. And it means our Z critical or Z um, star, however you like to do it, or Z alpha is going to be positive 1.645. Now why is it positive? Because we have a right tail test. Okay, remember that description. So our rule will be if our Z calculated based on our sample statistics is greater than or equal to Z critical, or if our P value is less than or equal to our alpha value, remember we chose this as 5%, then we're going to reject H0. All right, let's continue. To calculate our test statistic, we have our Z calculated formula, point of interest minus center divided by spread. Our point of interest was the 108.2. That was our sample value that we got. Here's our center, 106.4, and here's our spread, our sigma over root n. And we get the z calculated 3.45, which we should know by now in this course is a very, very high value. We're gonna do our comparison now. And here's our model where we have our unimodal normal model. We have our x and our z scale. We have our population mean, 106.4. We have our Z critical, 1645. We have our alpha identified, 05. And now we can clearly see that our 3.45 Z calculated is gonna be way, way over here somewhere. So what region is it in? It's in our reject region. Okay, so there's our Z calculated. And I've shown it with this red little cross circle, way, way over to the right. Remember, in a right tail test, the p-value associated with this Z calculated is the area to the right of that value. So what we do is we look up our Z calculated, 3.45. Remember, our table gives us the area to the left, but we need the area to the right. So 1 minus that value, triple naught 3. So remember our rule is if the p-value is less than the alpha, we reject H0. So here our p-value is for all intents and purposes zero, is indeed less than our alpha value of 05, so we're going to reject H0. And please notice both methods, critical value approach and p-value approach, must have the same results. If they don't, then you're doing something wrong. Our overall conclusion then, we'd have a statement saying that given our 95% confidence level or at a 5% significance level, we could say it both ways. And in our sample size of 85, we have sufficient or enough evidence to conclude that the average rush hour speed has indeed increased. So the fact that our test statistic was way, way over here and the p-value is very small it shouldn't have happened, but it did. So that's an indicator that the null hypothesis is no longer valid and that we should reject it. And it looks like the speed has increased. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for that for now. I'm just gonna post this um, to see how you're doing so far. Um, I will be making more recordings on this topic, but I just wanted to keep this one a little bit short so that uh, we could make sure that things are gonna work well. And I hope to be talking to you soon. Um, hope to be setting up maybe a, a Zoom question and answer session if we can and go from there. Hope everybody's well and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.